Thank you so much to Book of the Month for sponsoring this video. Book of the Month is an online book subscription service where their team curates five different books every single month, ranging a variety of genres, as well as the books being new releases or pre-releases, and even featuring authors' debut novels. So out of these five books, you get to choose one to receive straight to your door. You can add on extra books, and if none of the books that month feels right to you, then you can skip at any time, no extra charge. So if you'd like to sign up, your first hardcover book will be just $9.99 if you use the link in the description and my code CATKARIS. Book of the Month has sent me their October books to share with you, so here we go. First we have The Lincoln Highway by Amor Towles. This is a historical fiction set in the 1950s following a character named Emmett Watson who hits the open road with two friends and a brother in tow. Next up, we have The Perishing by Natasha Dion. This is a spectu <laughs> speculative fiction, early release, set in 1930s LA. It is a genre-bending tale of a pioneering journalist exploring shifts in time, identity, and love. Can I say I really love that cover? And I love this next one's cover, which is The Hex X by Aaron Sterling. This is a romance, quirky, steamy rom-com about a major breakup hex who will put a powerful spell on you. And also, I took a peek inside the book and the little illustration of the cat and the candle. So cute. Next, we have Harlem Shuffle by Colson Whitehead. This is a literary... <laughs> This is a literary fiction novel, a riveting and willy historical high story from a contemporary master that will leave you feeling in on the deal. And last for October's books, we have Everything We Didn't Say by Nicole Bart. Pushed out of her hometown after high school, a woman returns to solve the riddle of her family and a horrific crime scene. And for this month's Book of the Month add-on books, we have Apples Never Fall by Lane Moriarty, which is a contemporary fiction that follows a wealthy family whose matriarch goes missing. And then we have The Book of Magic by Alice Hoffman, who is the author of Practical Magic. So this is a fantasy book, which is the final book in the Practical Magic series. And it's a whirlwind journey of magic, curses, and familial love. Love. So these are Book of the Month's books. Thank you for listening. Remember to check out Book of the Month using the link in my description to get your first book for just $9.99 and use my code CATKARIS. So thank you again to Book of the Month.
is Tuesday. I usually start my filming weeks on Monday, but um, yeah, I woke up with like this very heavy feeling of grief yesterday because it was Columbus Day, Indigenous Peoples Day, and I am an Indigenous person. An indigenous person. Did I ever learn vowels? Hmm? It felt like a very mournful day and I felt pretty sad and angry for most of the day. Stop celebrating genocide. Literally, I am Mayan, I am Mopan Mayan, which I found this beautiful, wonderful website yesterday because um, there were a lot of resources uh, for indigenous peoples and is native-land.ca, I think. But um, wow, it shows like all of the areas and overlappings of different indigenous peoples and tribes and whatever. It was so fun to go through that map and representation for my Mopan Maya, uh, which is like Southern Belize and a little bit of Guatemala, but mostly Southern Belize. And that's still true to today. Um, yeah, it used to frustrate me a little while ago when people would be like, the ancient Maya. I'm like, no, we still exist. We're right here. I'm right here. Hello nice to meet you anyways i um yeah so i didn't really film yesterday but i did pack some orders in the evening because i had to get them out this morning get them out as soon as possible also uploaded my new video on sunday so i got a couple of new patreon uh mailed reward patrons so i need to package those so that i can also send them out the same time i send out all my orders and i just now got another order in so i need to pack that before i go so that everything can be clean and clear and good to go so maybe this vlog will be a little bit of a reading vlog so let's talk about some books yesterday um or not yesterday so this weekend i was super busy doing things on my computer and like i didn't have time to read physically because in the last video i was reading vespertine by margaret rogerson i was very excited about it i'm still very excited about it i just have do not have any time to like physically read a book right now so i really needed something to listen to but i didn't know what audiobook to listen to and i didn't feel like going through the stress of like trying to look for one and then trying to get into it and like not feeling it so I wanted to reread something that I already knew I was comfortable with and then I remembered that um, Maggie Stiefvater has the Raven Boys the first book in the Raven cycle on Spotify for free how fun so I was listening to that on Spotify for like a whole 24 hours um the only problem with that listening on spotify is that i listen to my audiobooks on 1.5 speed so um it was a little slow okay <laughs> i like listening to it much faster than regular speed so uh anyways i finished it um last night and it was really good again and i this will be my third reread of it um I read it every two years, so I looked in Goodreads when I like filled it in that I'd read it, and it said 2017, 2019, and then 2021. So like, you see, it's like one year in between of all of them. I just thought that was funny. Fun, eh? Right? <laughs> I just, it's just really good for the vibes. I really love it for the vibes. And then of course I was on Goodreads and I was like, hmm, let me look at a bad review. And I was just like, mm-hmm, yep. So my thoughts that I wrote down was. I think for people who don't like this book, it isn't a matter of bad writing or a bad book. It's just different tastes. It's like, if you get it, then you get it. And if not, you're just taking yourself too seriously. Oh, teenagers are angsty. Duh. Were you ever a teenager? I would also say that this book feels like walking through like a lazy field and you're like about to sneeze. But like, that's... I like that. Like, that's aesthetic for me. And it's like, it almost feels like a meandering book, but I'm here for it because I don't normally read real life book like books that take place in the modern world i hate it no thank you and i think that paranormal books always have this like like drowsy quality to them in a way or maybe just the paranormal books that i like like there's that one by um <laughs> you know i wish i knew what book i'm thinking of right now but it's blue with a girl in yellow on the cover I'll have inserted it now but that book is paranormal like a part of the real world and that's kind of how it has like the same like feeling um and I think that's why people like the Raven Boy so much is like the feeling and then you know it like gets into and it's like the first book there's four books in the series it definitely feels like there's a lot more that's gonna happen in this world so I like it I really like this book and I still like it after my third reread and it definitely feels like teenager I, I get the teenager feeling very much so like translated through this book so much like this is angsty teenager 
Yes. <laughs> oh crap, I need to leave. I don't wanna be late for class. Thank the universe. I have, actually thank me, cause I made the schedule, but also like I didn't make the times of the classes. So like, mm, I don't know. Anyways, thank the universe that my class on Tuesday starts at 2 p.m. It just, it, it feels so much better to start at 2 p.m. that 12. Anyways, so in August, August. I read Kingdom of the Wicked by Karen Maniscalco. She also wrote Stalking Jack the Ripper, which I liked the first book and then I read the synopsis for the second book. I was really hyped for it. I was really excited for the second book to come out and then I read the synopsis and I was like, absolutely not, absolutely not, not gonna read that. No, no, no. <laughs> it's like from the description at least, it's something that like I don't care for in books. I don't like, I uh, no thank you. So I um, didn't read it. I didn't read the second book. And I, I don't care. Even if you're like, oh, it didn't turn out that way though. I just don't care to read it anymore, but <laughs> that's sad. Anyways, or was it the third book? Did I read the second book and then I didn't want to read the third book? I think that's the case. <laughs> I have no idea. It was a long time ago now. She came out with this book called King of the Wicked and I read it. I listened to an audiobook and it was the same narrator as Stalking Jack the Ripper and I just... Is it just me or does it feel like that person is like faking a British accent? I don't know why. Are you joking? My camera died. <laughs> so rude. Anyways, as I was saying, uh, I read Kingdom of the Wicked. Didn't really like it. I feel like there's a lot of hype around it and people are like, oh my god, Rathen, whatever her name is. Um, oh my god but i don't i didn't like feel the chemistry between them i gave the book a three out of five stars what i really did like about the book was the like the descriptions the world like the italian like culture like food and stuff that was very fun very exciting but that cannot make up the whole book that can only go so far um did my hair look like this the whole time in that clip i didn't like that book very much but then and it's a ya right then i heard that the second book was going to be a spicy book a new adult book and i'm like how can you go from a y it felt very much like a ya book and so that's so why i was like oh maybe i should stop reading ya right now F take a break because it's clearly not my vibe right now um but then I heard that the second book was going to be a spicy book, a new adult book. And I'm like, how can you go from YA to new adult in the same series? Mm. If you watched my vlog where I was talking about books for the first time again in a long time, I was talking about how I don't like when spicy books like A Court of Thorns and Roses is marketed as young adult because it's not young adult and not that young adults can't handle that or can't read that. But I just think that it should not be labeled as that. Obviously, they can read above their level, but then they should know that it's above their level. And then on Goodreads, it says the second book is a um, new adult and a young adult. I'm like, how is it both? Please decide. Somebody please verify this. Even if it's like, okay, the author says that like, it's actually a new adult. It's never been a young adult. This book is on lists of like top 10 new YA books coming out in the fall. So stop doing that please anyway so i was like spicy book duh i'm a horse i'm gonna read it so i i had nothing else to listen to an audiobook so i got that audiobook and i do not like the narrator i like now it's solidified that i just do not like this narrator there's just something about it and i think that one of my favorite books stolen songbird i tried to listen to the audiobook once and i was like this is not what the character sound like when i read it physically and so that's a fear of mine that i have when i when listening to audiobooks is that like the characters sound more annoying because of the narrator and then I like start getting annoyed more with the book and it's mostly the narrator audiobook fault and not the book itself and so I think that's what's happening right now so I'm like I don't know what chapter I'm at because now I'm using my phone to film this clip I think that the main character just sounds so annoying to me because I'm like sh the, the narrator is getting on my nerves <laughs> I just I already got the audiobook on audible so like I'm gonna have to power through I have no choice, but I will update you on if it is actually a spicy book. I mean, so far it is uh, reading as a spicy book, like first freaking page. It was like, hello, I am spicy, just so you know, you know, spicy is like the in term right now for smutty books. Okay. So anyways, um, and oh, I also wanted to read this, but I was like, okay, I will actually read this. Because at first I was like, I'm not going to read the second book. And I'm not only reading it because it's spicy, but I like the idea of the seven rings of hell and like, you know, the seven deadly sins. I love that idea and I really want to read that. But like nobody else is really doing it. But if you have a recommendation, let me know. But it's happening in this book and 
So I wanted to read it anyways. And so far, it's pretty good. If I'm ignoring the narrator's annoyingness, then it's pretty good. Okay. literally so rude they said how about I get a little slice of that pizza you got in there mm, I do not do New York accents well but I'm upset rude rude birds <laughs>
let's have some reading updates. I think I mentioned that I had read Kingdom of the Wicked. Yes, because I had said August. Wow, August. I felt like that was so long ago. And I didn't have any interest in continuing on with the series, but I heard that it was going to be a spicy second book. And I was like, mm, interesting. Upon further investigation, uh, so I was talking about how, why are we labeling spicy books young adult books? Like, that's not right. And I don't, like, mean to get on this because, like, I'm a prude or anything, but, like, I would like to just know that those things are present in a book before I walk in. It's not like these books are inaccessible once they become a new adult book or a romance book. It's not like they're inaccessible. I would just like it to be specifically, specifically labeled as such. It's important to label things properly because when it comes to sexual scenes, there can be tropes and kinks that can be triggering for people. So walking into a book thinking that it's a young adult, then someone might not have looked up the trigger warnings, which they might have needed. So it's just important to label and then also placing them in books. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm just trying to get at that. <laughs> So oh, anyways, I listened to the audiobook of Kingdom of the Cursed, which is the second book to Kingdom of the Wicked. Here are my thoughts. They'll be like slightly spoilery, but like mm, not really. I will have a little tiny spoiler um, because I don't know how to like explain it like without like just telling you because it's just it's this book confused me. I was gonna give it three stars. I think I gave Kingdom of the Wicked three stars and then I was gonna give Kingdom of the Curse three stars but then I was like no I need to take a star off like it needs to happen as I was like sitting there trying to like think about my trying to gather my thoughts. I was like no. <laughs> so I wrote down a couple of notes. Uh, so the first book it's like by itself that first book Kingdom of the Wicked felt like a young adult book. Fine whatever young adult okay. Then I was like, maybe I'm just not vibing with the young adult right now. Ah. Say, say something. Boy! <laughs> he doesn't. Uh, he's crazy. Anyways, the way that the first book was laid out, it was just very much a young adult book. It felt like a young adult book. So that's why I felt like, okay, maybe I'm just reading too much young adult right now. Like, I need to take a step away. Fine, whatever. Moving on with life. And so now the second book is supposed to be like smutty, right? And spicy. I got the impression that it felt like it was trying to like tick all the boxes of being a smutty book. Like, we first enter the book and it's like, okay, this is what this book is gonna be. But it felt like it was in a completely different genre, which it was. Which is weird to do within one series to me. Which is not to say that book's tone can't become more mature within a, a series but it's felt really weird within this series and like the content matter and it's only the second book and there wasn't like much of a uh curve in transition from one genre to the other like sure you don't have to have like the smutty vibe throughout all of the book but then having read the second book and if I'm going off of what the second book is, because that's the direction that it's taking it in, I feel like the first book didn't need to exist in the way that it did. It didn't need to have been told like that. It could have been condensed and summarized into a couple of chapters and put into the beginning of this book and called it the first book. And then that would have set the vibe and this would have been completely like a new adult romance book, fantasy book. But just the way that the second book starts off, it's like so smutty and it feels like really weirdly unbalanced. Uh, I feel like there was time between books and the author decided, actually, I'm going to do this, which mm, I don't feel like you can do that because it, it interrupts the flow if you're reading the books back to back, which I kind of did in a way, like it was a couple months in between, but like I retained. I mean, the idea isn't that people are going to be taking a huge amounts of time between reading books, like that's just... That's only gonna happen when the book comes out, maybe. Also, I was complaining about the narrator for the audiobook and then I kept feeling bad because I was like, wow, I just said that this woman sounds like she does not have a real uh, British accent, but there's just some words. The way that she says murder, she's like, murder, murder. It just doesn't sound like how British people say murder. It made me uncomfortable. <laughs> After I pinpointed that, that she says murder weirdly, it just made me so uncomfortable for the rest of the book because I'm worried it said a lot. Uh, <laughs> um, I Oh, I got over like the fact of the narrator and I was just trying to enjoy the story for what it was, which I was enjoying the story, like I was here for it, like I like the idea of the hell and the, you know, the like reality, which is like mm, debauchery. It needed to choose a direction. It needed more in whichever one of these directions that the author was trying to go, but it was like the whole book was like in this weird middle ground the whole time, which I just mm, like made me unsettled and a lot of the times when I'm like objectively this book or this book series isn't good I can still enjoy it for what it is and then I still rate it for what I think it is you know like for the badness that it is like I'll still rate it high so like from blood and ash 
objectively not good books, but enjoyable nonetheless. So that's why I gave them the ratings that I did. I don't remember what I rated them, but I think it was like four stars or something. Like, and now I look back and I'm like, objectively, that should have been like a three stars at the most. But for me, because I knew what the book was, I knew that like how not good it was. I could be like, yes, I will enjoy this, you know? That didn't settle down for me in this book. Ugh. Here's gonna be like a little bit of a spoiler. I'm gonna insert a time now that you can skip to if you don't wanna hear the spoiler. Go. I think that it's still labeled young adult and um, teen because they never actually do it. But the whole book is constant like sexual tension and smutty vibes and um, just not... They just don't actually do it with both of their parts, okay? But they do, but he does with his hand, you know? So like, always in young adult, it's a fade to black if they ever do do the deed. Um, and in this book, by the, at the end of the book, they finally do it, but it's a fade to black. So that's why I think that it's still labeled as a young, I don't know, I don't know why I'm so hung up on this that it's young. I literally don't care that much, but like, does anybody understand? How frustrating that is though. I don't know why I'm getting so into it. But other than that, with the romance, I enjoy it. I think that the characters had much more chemistry than they did in the first book. And I think that Barriers, wow, king, main character dude, Reth. What a consent king, okay? This was definitely written by a woman, for sure. <laughs> uh, so I enjoyed it for those parts of it, but I just feel like it didn't have a solid, like, does that make any sense guys <laughs> don't you love that i'm talking about books again in the most nonsensical way possible anyways moving on from that book i'm back to a vespertine because now things have finally settled down and now i can read my book physically and last night i was just trying to finish that audiobook because i was like i just want to i just want to have everything together and then i could talk about it in this video so reading vespertine margaret rogerson if you saw the last vlog I got this, it came out that week, and so I've been reading it physically. I'm at page 109, and I'm still going strong. I was reading it on the train, and oh, it's just so fun. I love the main character. I love the, the way the main character is being written, because I feel like I don't see it very often. Uh, in YA main characters, a lot of times I'm like, wow, just get it together, girl. Not every main character has to be like that, but like, I want one. Somewhere, somehow, can I please find a main character that just gets with it? Here she is. <laughs> and I'm so happy to be reading it. It just, it gets a little grady when every female main character feels the same in that way, where they're like, oh, I don't know. And then they're just not, like, not seeing the obvious. Watch, she be, she turn into that. I really love the magic in this world and how it's being explained. It feels very easy to understand and very like, like I can get into it. And I love, I love the like battle scenes that, that are going on, the way that it's just, it feels so powerful, the way that the author is writing it. Oh, so good. So I'm gonna continue reading. I'm gonna get in my couch with my cozy stuff. I hope my coffee kicks in and I don't take a nap. Filming this clip has energized me, so. After I finished Kingdom of the Cursed, I was like, I just wanna listen to another audiobook because I feel like I haven't really had audiobooks listen. Like I've just been in this weird like purgatory plays where i'm like i want to listen to an audiobook but i don't know which one do you ever you're like i just want to listen to an audiobook right now and like i would love to consume this book right now but i want to read it physically but like i need an audiobook so that's that's where i feel like i'm at right now mm -hmm. 